Hey traders, Nick Shaheen here looking at Beyond Meat. First of all, I just had my first taste of it and I did not like it. I'm not a you know big connoisseur of meat, so it's not like it's meat and not meat. I was I do like vegan foods. I do eat meat, but I do like vegan foods and this one tasted like uh, vitamins to me. Maybe it's a personal thing. All right, so I would eat it if I had to, but if I didn't have to, I wouldn't pay for it, especially not a premium. That aside, I think they're doing the right thing. Um, when the restaurants got killed during this COVID thing and the pandemic, uh, the closures, the businesses are closed, therefore their buyers are gone. They used to be the restaurants. So they fit, switched focus to the retail. So it's more likely you'll see more of it on the shelves in the supermarket, for example. I do like that because, uh, you know, the business to consumer model is always been good and the consumer is still spending money. Uh, especially on food. So that said, the fundamentals are okay from that perspective, the thesis. Uh, we'll look at the fundamentals in a little bit, but this is discussion more about stocks. Actually, let's look at the fundamentals now. Where is it? All right, I'll use Benzinga's tool here. Um, Beyond Meat. Just, I do like to look at a few things. This is supposed to be a growth stock, right? So I don't want it to be profitable. PE ratio of whatever, it's 584. I know people are laughing now. But it, um, you know, the more important number is this one, 23, the price to sales, 12 months sales, the trailing 12 months. So basically the stock price, how many years is priced in based on its run rate that it just had? Um, it's high, but it's not as crazy as, say, Zoom or Shopify. Uh, th those are, you know, Shopify is 55, 56. Uh, Zoom is 112, I looked yesterday. So not expensive compared to those, but still expensive. Amazon, to give you a relative, is five. Uh, Apple, seven. Facebook, Google, and all that are about 10 to 12. Just gives you an idea of where it stands. Forward PE, they're projecting it to be to drop in half. So they're expecting profitability to go up. Those are fundamental. Let me see, are they are, are they growing? I said it's supposed to be growing. Uh, this is the income statement. Let's see here, 2016, 17, 18, and 19. So yeah, hell yeah, look at that. So it is a growth company, therefore my assumption is to look at price to sales was correct. Back to the stock chart, which is what I'm talking about. By the way, today is 10.30. Um, happy Halloween one day in advance. And uh, hopefully the election week will go without a hitch. Woo. Okay, uh, in the US shellacking right so this is where i would get interested in it it's entering a zone that's a pivot zone and i'll explain let me see if i can get any information from my own lines that i've drawn before okay so you see i didn't draw these lines today i drew them a long long time ago i want to uh, bring your attention to one of them the red line that just hit current price this one i'm interested to see where that came from you see where it i just look boom so that tells me that I've looked at this level before at some point in time and I forgot about it. Um, first of all, it looks like um, ABC pattern. So um, usually when stocks move in bursts, and I've noticed that I didn't make this stuff up. I mean, people do that, ABC. Uh, so um, it, it, there's a burst. There's a consolidation period. It can be down. It can be up. It can be sideways. It doesn't matter. It's a consolidation period. And then they, uh, they come back to finish the job. So in this case, they kind of fell short, but this was, you know, COVID. <laughs> so I usually don't give it full credit. Um, so they did their thing, right? So now they're coming back into the starting point. So if you miss the whole rally from here, this is your chance. However, you can say, oh, the rally started here. Okay, fine. So that's why I said it's entering a consolidation zone. So let's see if we can get smarter about this zone. First of all, that's the zone where it's consolidated. So there's no reason to price it all out. Once a consolidation zone, once price goes above it, the whole thing should be support. So it's like a very firm mattress. I just made that up. I usually say mattress, but this is very firm mattress, meaning it's not a hard line in the sand, but it should hold, should. Mind you, the um, stock market is going into a tizzy because of uh, the correct, the, the, political environment sorry about the trucks outside i picked the wrong day to do the wrong time to do the video but anyway uh so 
it, it can be falling to no fault of its own. So it, that's why I say there's no hard lines in the sand because there are so many outside factors that play into it. All right, so to my eye, it's looking pretty good down here. Um, worth a shot from the long side. So this is the tricky part. How do you get long? Um, my style of getting long, I don't need to be surgical. Um, I can sell put spreads or puts if I want to own the shares below and leave room for error and let them fight it out. Uh, that's my style of trading. So uh, in other words, I find it easier to know where prices are not going to go rather than to chase a, a price. So buying shares right now would mean that I want it to rally. Selling puts or put spreads means that I don't want it to rally. I, it could rally. I don't care. It could fall. I don't care as long as it stays above my uh, risk level. So uh, pick your poison and say, okay, I want to own it for 100, and then I sell a put at 100. Then when it comes to 100, then uh, I have to buy the shares at 100. And for that, I earn a fee right now, kind of like an insurance company, uh, so to speak. All right, so having said that, let's look if this level, where did this red line come from? Remember I said I had a red line? Boy, this truck is not wanting to leave. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's just bothering the hell out of me. Okay, the heck out of me. Sorry, Google, YouTube. So, um, let's see. Zoom out to one week. And then there it is. All right, so this level has come in play before. Too noisy? Okay, I'll take it out. Right, so let me speak to it with a fresh set of crayons. All right, so this is where we are. This is where I think it is a base because of these pokes. This candle is pretty important in my opinion, and it's <laughs> it's right there. So these are important clearly, um, and this is the ledge I was playing off of right here. This was the accident scene sometime in October last year. We'll go dig it out. Something happened there. I don't know what happened, but it just um, something happened and boom it took it a heck of a long time to come back to it they tried to exceed it and failed they came back under it they 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 tried to rally so this is a shame that this was ruined right this was a nice opportunity for the bulls i do believe i did share a long recently and i did get out of it like the next day or the day after it spiked it was a gift um so maybe i I pinged off of this or this I can't remember no it must have been here more recent so down here all right so this was ruined but is it so if they if they recover a little bit here they still have a chance to salvage it so it's, instead of it being like this it'll be like this it all depends what happens here so this all comes down to me saying I started this whole thing by saying it's falling into support and this is the support line I expect. One is trend support. Two is level support. This orange line is um, the point of control. Uh, let, let me go explain it to you. It's a volume profile. So these volume bars here tell me when the volume happened. I know that in May there was a lot of volume. I know in, in January there was a lot of volume. I know there's not a lot of, not a lot of volume here. So, but that doesn't give me actionable in information. This stuff is the same information, only at what level. So I know that at 122, it's the place where both bulls and bears loved it the most. But here's the important part. At 142 and 131, that whole zone, it's almost just as busy. What does that mean? When a stock is price, when a stock is falling into a place where both bulls and bears have had history of trading it a lot, chances are they're going to wake up and trade it a lot again. Therefore, the whole area is a strong what, firm mattress. So, I expect it to find footing here. Now there is earnings here. That's a crapshoot all by itself. So the reaction to earnings, you're saying, I know a lot of you are saying, the two of you are watching this video are saying they're going to crush it or they're going to miss. It doesn't matter. Look at Amazon. They tripled their net income. Tripled it. They crushed earnings. They grew 50% above the estimate. Uh, on, on all metrics, they just crushed it. 
AWS fell growth down to, get this, 29%. It's it fell to 29% and people are pooping all over that. So the actual results have no bearing on how the stock is going to trade at the headline. After that, they're going to figure out, oh my God, this company is making money like an ATM machine. So I don't know what they're going to do and I really don't care. Whatever you think you know, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a coin flip, the reaction. Every once in a while, there'll be an emphatic report that says the game has changed, like snap. But other than that, it's it's just a coin flip, absolute coin flip. So, if you, Twitter is another example. They missed their metric by eight million. Like they were expecting nine million uh, monetizable users, they got one. That is actionable information that will change because the expectations were wonky. Who's expecting an extra 9 million? Not me. So when you have misaligned expectations, but who's to know what the expectations are? So what I'm trying to tell you, don't try to gain the earnings. It's a coin flip. If you love the stock long term, you stay in it. If you hate it, you don't get into it because of the earnings. You don't short it because of the earnings. It's a coin flip. I'm telling you, earnings or not earnings, this is an interesting region. So whether the headline takes it below this region or not, I don't know. Whether the headline causes a bounce, I don't know. But the proper thing to do is, if I'm short, I get out and book my profits. If I'm looking to get long, this is where I take a long. If I'm looking to add to my longs and I bought here, maybe I'll add some here uh, a little bit. Um, so these are my thoughts on Beyond Meat. Don't poo poo the company because you don't like the product. I didn't like the product. I'm thinking about going long. I don't want to short it because I didn't like the product. Plenty of people do. In fact, I have a chat room linked down below. I have about 250 people in there at some point yesterday, and I posted I didn't like the product. I had everybody else say, no, I liked it. So, matter of taste. It's a viable product. There are people that don't want to eat meat, some for health reasons, other for moral reasons. Some want to save the planet. It doesn't matter the reasons. There is a, a market for it, believe it or not, whether you're a steak person or not. It's a viable idea. Whether this company is the company, I don't know. But maybe all of them. So chart-wise, this looks like a viable dip. Nick signing out.